Good evening, First Lady Michelle. Welcome, Michelle Violet White. How are you? All right. Enjoy your meeting, Violet White. Thank you for stopping by. Trixie Aden Adeyanju. Welcome, Trixie. Yes, it's uh, early settings right now on the way now show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. What a great show we have lined up for you tonight. Yeah, man, very good show lined up for you tonight right here on the Wayne All Show. All right, want to say big shout out to, yeah, Fresh FM Radio, London. All right, speaking of London, big up CR, Christine Rendo in the house. Yeah, East London. Yeah, if you want to, you can check out the Wayne All Show, man. You should, not if you want to. All right, Clark TV Network. Welcome, everyone, and Clark TV Network. Welcome to viscosityblend.com. All right, Hype FM, the right FM. Frankie Lex and the crew. What's good, Frankie Lex? Islandworldwide.com. <laughs> China Nicole, the Sutherlands. I just like, that sounds like the name of a sitcom, you know? The Sutherlands. <laughs> Hi, China Nicole and the crew. All right. And if you're tuned in to the Waynallshow.com, good evening. Welcome. You're watching us live there on the Waynallshow.com. That's great. Remember, you can telephone 518-896-1646. That's 518-896-1646. Oh, pardon me. Reggae Vibes Radio. My home station. How can I leave them out, right? Big up to reggaevibesradio.com, all right? And download our app. Listen to us. LTU Media. Listen to us to check out the Wayne All Show. It's such a pleasure to have everyone here this evening, man. All right? And it's a great show. We're going to really shine some light on autism this evening. And then we have an author of erotic poetry joining us at the end of the show, 9.30. So we're going to really do some service for the uh, Autism um, Awareness Month of April because we're going to feature, we're going to have a guest, Mr. J.P. Faircloth, and he's from Faircloth ABA. And I'll let you t him tell you all about himself, man, and the great work he's doing, especially for autistic individuals, all right? Also, uh, we're going to have uh, um, Mr. Henry Wright. He's the father of an autistic child who is a senior now at the West Orange High School in Florida and um, Winter Park, Florida. That's right. And uh, he's going to share his autism journey with us. And Janice O'Shea has the Caribbean Infotainment Report. All right. And that will be followed by the interview to wrap up the show. All right. Okay. So there you go. Mm -mm -mm. Great show lined up. Hopefully by the end of the show, you can say you feel happier. When the morning comes and we see what we become, in the call of the day, we're a flame and we not the fire that we begun. Every argument, every word we can't take back. Cause they all let us up and I think that we both know the way that the story ends Then only for a minute I wanna change my mind Cause this just don't feel right to me I wanna raise your spirits I wanna see you smile But know that means I love to leave Don't 
Crown with my naughty, so I got to behave. Can't make them pull I out with them slanderous lips and them lying mouths. No. Can't make them pull I out with them flatterous lips and them shocking mouths. Oh, we're just a positive way now, a positive move, positive vibes. Oh, a positive chatter, positive walk. Yes, a positive talk, positive ride. Yes, a positive drive. When them try, say them just can't conquer Ooh, I love you Rasta No matter when them try, say them just can't conquer Cause I might rise up out my bed every morning early Got to exercise to keep my body fit and sturdy Spiritually fit me up with tongue chat first Cause the wicked and the eden them round me Strike up me light, I send me light on me sensei Make it flow to my head, no meditation with plenty Chant a song, I read me Bible in the morning early Cause I conquer, I conquer them slowly Whoa, just a positive way now, a positive move Positive vibe, oh, a positive chat Positive walk, yes, a positive talk Positive ride, yes, a positive drive Keep I safe till morning light. Ja, your love surrounding me, yes. Ja, feel I up with his mercies. Ja, love surrounding me. Ja, feel I up with his blessings. Whoa, yes. Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Rasta. So we arise then. Get down, we long 
Right, the, that is the sound of none other than Imar Shepherd. Who am say? Chew him arise them vex. Chew we arise them vex. I don't think he might throw a word in him. Just a comment on typical human behaviors, right? When someone uh wants when someone progress, not everybody likes it. Isn't that the truth right there? Not everyone likes it when someone is progressing in life, and sometimes it just comes out in some weird but very interesting ways, all right. And speaking about human behaviors, man, I'm telling you, I'm so looking forward to a conversation I'm about to have with one of the most qualified persons on the planet <laughs> to discuss behaviors. But you know, we're focusing this month, it's Autism Awareness Month. And uh, great show I had this past Monday, a podcast with uh, Miss Marcia Harris. You know, take a bite, share a mouthful. And, uh, you, you know, it was such a great show. And, uh, you know, I'm back this, after, this evening and I have a great guest to get us going talking about autism. We're going to get over to him here shortly. And then also later on, I have a parent with an autistic child who is a senior in high school, in a Florida high school. And I can't just wait to hear Mr. Henry Wright talk about his son. But for right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to go on over to... My first guest of the evening, who is Mr. J.P. Fearclaw. And I want to welcome J.P. and remind him to unmute, <laughs> to, to unmute right. so we can hear him loudly and clearly and say a very pleasant good evening and welcome, sir. Let me switch headphones before you even speak. Make sure I can hear you. How are you, J.P.? Hey, afternoon. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me on your platform, Wayne. Oh, yeah. man, this is this is such a great moment. I am the so church. excited that we could be doing this and yeah. doing it, especially for autism. That's right. You know, uh, it's Autism Awareness Month, mm -hmm. all month long. Yeah, we got a couple of days left. But for us, like someone like myself, who it's no secret, I work with autistic, the autistic population. It's a challenge all year long. It's something we do all year long. So I want to welcome you. Um, I'm going to say JP. That's okay. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> I want to welcome you, JP, man. It's, it's good to have you. And let me start by uh, just telling the audience you actually own a behavior therapy, ABA business and company, and you service all ages. You provide more than just artistic service in the community, but I'll let you share more, shed more light on that for us. So um, just tell us a little bit about your background, JP, and, and how your journey took you to where you are right now. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, I'd be glad to. Um, it all started back in 2006 as a special education uh, substitute teacher in Gwinnett County. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with a, with a class and, and realize, wow, these these students have personalities, uh, they have preferences, and you know, just looking beyond the behaviors that they showed and realizing they were they were just like everyday people like you and me. And you know, also having family members um, who also receive special education services, uh, it definitely is a passion to work with this community, this population. Uh, also, further on with my studies at after getting my bachelor's in psychology, I ended up getting my master's in special education. Uh, I ended up coming across uh, the field of ABA and decided, hey, this is something I want to pursue. After getting my master's in special education, I ended up continuing on and getting my master's in ABA and starting my own agency. So, <laughs> yeah. What a journey, man. Yes, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of school there, JP. I yeah, guess that's what it takes. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, let me tell you something. That is an amazing, amazing accomplishment in its own right, even from an academic perspective. So you fell in love with the uh, special the needs population. It, exactly. Yep. Wow. Um, truly great. That's truly great. Well, uh, tonight I want us to focus a little bit on autism. And, you know, 
from your perspective, what is a great way to tell an audience, let's say my audience is not aware of what autism is, what's an easy way to try and describe it for our audience? Um, let's see, an easy way to explain it would be, uh, let's see, a condition where there would be social, um, particularly social disorders. Yeah. Um, there would be typical behaviors, um, just as um, hand flapping, um, ste vocal stereotypes associated with it, uh, and communication disorders as well. Um, but yeah, between um, the communication and the social disorders, those are the main two. Yeah. So that um, will determine the autism diagnosis um, along with some, of the, some other typical behaviors. Um, and that's usually, it's usually caught by a pediatrician. Usually a pediatrician around two will be screening for that. Right. Um, from then they'll look at um, recommending or referring to ABA agencies like myself that will write an ABA treatment plan and create goals and a registered behavior technician will be working directly with that client with the supervision of the BCBA, the board certified behavior analyst. Uh, which is, is my um, which is domain. My... Wow. So let's let there's a lot you said there. So, yep. so let's let's break it down. Socially, you said socially, they're socially challenged. So for the everyday person, what are socially challenging behaviors? How can we one kind of identify these with our population, autistic population? And two, how do we how do we, in general, try to deal with them out in the public? Um, well, one of the most common characteristics um, uh, or challenges with a, for social behavior would be eye contact. So if you're lacking eye contact, um, it's going to definitely challenge communication. And so we want to, that would be one of the first areas we want to establish uh, is creating eye contact, maintaining eye contact. Other areas would be uh, initiating um, greetings uh, or, or responding to greetings from peers. Uh, and also being able to, we call it the word manned, um, but in layman's terms, it would be making requests, yeah. you know, requests from peers and also sharing. Um, those are important social um, skills that are needed in order for, in order to thrive in the general setting. Wow, social. And then, uh communication let's let's uh break that down a little bit more on all day about communication because that's our, <laughs> that's our specialty at Franklin behavior services um it's going to be in a field of verbal behavior uh, right and that's teaching children who have challenges with being able to communicate uh, vocally um to be able to strengthen those skills and be able to communicate from you know just syllables being able to say just syllables and, and just sounds to creating words and short phrases and eventually um, sentences and extended sen sentences where we can have conversations. Um, and and, and um, it can be done vocally, which would be every parent's, you know, ultimate goal there. But um, with some children, their preference may be to use um, sign language or a PEX board. So it's up to the client at that point to, uh, if they have a preference for communication, we're going to honor that because they'll be more motivated to use that form of communication in order to get their needs met. Uh, in order to uh, appropriately get to what they need. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you said PEX board just now. And mm -hmm. to my audience, if someone is wondering, PEX oh. board, <laughs> that would be a picture, picture exchange communication system. Do That's you right. want to break that down a little bit for the audience in terms of if uh, a child yeah. can't speak, mm -hmm. how are you really going to teach them to function yeah. in well, terms of communication? Yeah, there are multiple forms in order to teach a child how to communicate. But if um, vocally is, is not looking like um, teaching them how to speak is going to be effective, then we'll use what's called the PEX board, Picture Exchange Communication System, where um, we'll have pictures of things that they like, the preferred items, some of the things that they're, um, you know, typically trying to get access to, and then show them how to appropriately ask for it, whether it's pointing to the picture with one step, would, which would be our initial process, and then extending it to two or three or more steps in order to accurately indicate what they want. Very good, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking with Mr. J.P. Fairclough of Fairclough ABA, uh, board-certified behavior uh, specialist, and uh, 
listen, we have a lot to learn right here on how we can interpret and tolerate and just associate with our autistic community. You know, you, you, you mentioned there, uh, JP, uh, quite a few things, the social, the communication, the repetitive behaviors and stuff. What I want us to try and have a better understanding and awareness of is what I want my audience this evening to be able to do is if they're out tomorrow in the community and mm-hmm. they run into members of the autistic population, they can feel comfortable that, you know what, I have heard this on the Wayne All Show and if we act this way, we can deal with some things. There are so many scenarios of seeing kids out in the community, mm-hmm. with, especially I say kids because that's the population I work with the most, but there are adults too right. with autism. But let's say, you know, they're out maybe shopping, maybe mm-hmm. just just doing their routine things, doing errands in the community, and we might hear screaming, we might see stuff happening. Give us some scenarios and, and how you would recommend yeah, that sure. the general audience look at it, be able to process it and, and, and help our autistic population. Excellent. Yeah, I'm very excited to talk about this. Um, uh, it's probably a scenario you've heard about before, but I really want to jump into the concepts of positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement okay. and positive punishment, negative punishment. Um, and so I want to split those terms up and then and, and share with y'all what we're thinking about on in, in the ABA world. Right. We're talking about positive and negative. We're talking about, um, when we talk about positive, we're talking about adding something. Um, mm-hmm. Like a math teacher, if you're thinking about the positive side, it's going to be plus. We're adding something. Um, and then negative would mean, you know, we're taking away. Good. Or, you know, like just that. attracting something, removing something. Yes. Um, and so, um, yeah, positive, negative. Um, and the next um, terms would be reinforcement and punishment. Uh, reinforcement will be an instance or a scenario, phenomenon that occurs that you want to happen again. You're like, oh, that was pleasant. Okay, I wouldn't mind that occurring again. Yeah, right. uh, while punishment would be a phenomenon, an instance that occurs that you're like, ah, I don't want that to happen again. Right. Or I'm going to avoid that. You know, and so um, when we split it up that way, we'll be able to understand those terms. So when we say the words positive reinforcement, it means we're adding something um, to a situation that we want to occur again. Um, we talk about negative reinforcement, something's being removed and that you would like to occur again. Um, when we talk about positive punishment, something's being added to a scenario that you're like, uh-uh, I don't want that to happen again. And then a negative reinforce, negative punishment would be something being taken away that you would say, "Uh uh-uh, I do not want that uh, to happen. So I hope I explained that a little clearly and um, supplying it to, you know, being out in the community and let's say you're out shopping with your child and, um, you know, this can be the case for um, children on the spectrum or even those who are neurotypical. Right. And you decide, hey, um, I want want that candy right there um, in the candy aisle and you say no, and they decide to start screaming, tantruming, and uh, you know, they start elevating it and you start feeling embarrassed and you're like, hey, I really don't even want to deal with this right now. You just go ahead and get the candy. And so yeah. the candy and then you continue on. Well, if we break it down um, into the both perspectives and let's look at the, the parent's perspective. Um, well, what happened was the child began to to cry and and, and tantrum, scream. And so what happened was, um, you know, there there was the scenario of you know feeling embarrassed because your child's making a scene. Yeah. So you want to remove that. You okay. want to remove that kind of stimuli. So mm-hmm. what you end up doing is saying, okay, go ahead and take it, and and what ends up being negative reinforcement for the parent. In other words, you, you, you have just taught that child that whenever they want their way, they can throw a tantrum. Oh, yeah. I haven't gotten to that. Oh, my God. See, I usually start, we usually start with the, the child's perspective, but I wanted to start with the parent's perspective first. Got you. But yeah, let's go, let's go look at the, the, the child's perspective there. Mm-hmm. Um, again, they wanted access to the candy. Right. So they, do, they started crying. So what they did was add that stimuli of crying to the environment. Okay. And in return, the parents said, all right, you know what, you can get it. And in turn, so it ended up being positive reinforcement mm-hmm. for the child. So both are reinforcements. Both are like, hey, yeah. 
that happens again, I'm more likely to do that. Okay. Um, except for the parents, we ended up reinforcing the tantruming behavior, which is not a behavior that we want to, you know, we don't right. want our children to be right. doing that behavior continuously. But actually, we did reinforce it so that way, that way the next time you go shopping, um, that child's more likely to tantrum and scream. You know, wow. That stuff. Wow. That's a classic way of breaking down negative and positive reinforcement. And I know it sounds like a lot, but I'm pretty sure the audience can appreciate where you're coming from because anyone who's been around kids know they'll go into a store, they'll want to have their own way, they'll want to have stuff. And it, it might be, it might not even be a tantrum. It could be just seeing your child look disappointed, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I, oh, I hate to see my child look like that. You yeah, know, that's a form of negative negative reinforcement. The same way, um, you know, another version of negative reinforcement would be, you know, an alarm clock going off to wake you up in the morning. You don't like hearing that alarm clock, so you hit the snooze button or you know, <laughs> plug out the, the clock, yeah. get it remove it. So that's negative. Another example of uh, negative reinforcement. Wow! Thank you so much, man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. J.P. Fearclough of Fearclough ABA, an agency that's providing services in our community in terms of applied behavior analysis treatments you know especially for our autistic population really a pleasure to have him on this evening great information here i want to use this next segment of the conversation to talk a little bit about your business you mm -hmm. you explained earlier your journey to where you are in terms of you started as a substitute teacher in a, in a gwinnett county public school fell in love with the autistic population. That sounds very familiar, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know somebody. I'm the only one on this broadcast. <laughs> that way. And then as you studied more, you got deeper and deeper into it and you started your own agency. Tell us a little bit about Faircloth ABA. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're a small agency that we provide ABA therapy in the home environments, also in the school environments. Um, using a variety of curriculums to, with, with our main one being uh, verbal behavior, um, using the VB map. Um, we also have a number of other curriculums we use uh, for clients that might have moderate to severe autism, where, where we target um, essential living skills, um, and that resource would be the Essentials for Living. Uh, and we also have the resources that we use for our clients that are school-based, uh, where we're teaching derived relational training, which is a whole other um, concept that that we'll have to save for another time. I know. Um, <laughs> okay. and, yeah, um, and then we'll have, we'll be able. We have another curriculum that we use for our more um, adolescent to adult clients uh, as well. Um, that's assessment of functional living skills. And so, yeah, we, our goal is to be able to 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 treat and create individual treatment plans for any kind of client across various um, across various abilities. Uh, on, the, on the autism spectrum. Great, great, great. What's your website? Our website is www.fairaba.com. It is www.fairaba.com. And is there a phone number that anyone who wants to share this information or call? Yes, yeah. 770 608 7317. Seven, let's, all right, one sec. Let me I'll get a pen that writes. Let's repeat the number, 770-608-7317. And then um, if you want to post my information on your, on the YouTube um, screen, you know, yeah. all the information and all that, any additional information, do that. Okay, so 770-608-6317. Mm -hmm. 7317. 7317. Correct. All right. That's the number to call, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Faircloth ABA. So you are providing this service by way of your agency. Correct. As far as autism goes, um, the, the average person will probably see it at some point in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. there, there are some um, things that, you know, can help a general population to grasp the way of processing. Uh, for instance, if we're out in the community and we come across these individuals, how comfortable should we be to greet them, to, to, to interact with them? Um, definitely, um, I mean, 
you want to, if there's a caretaker there, I would definitely check in with the, the caretaker. Um, but if someone comes up to you just independently, want to introduce themselves, uh, yeah, go ahead and, you know, you can respond. Uh, you should feel comfortable responding. It probably a skill that they're working on, a social skill that they're working on with their, with their teacher or, or with their, um, you know, their BCBA if they have one. Okay. Wow. I'm, um, I'm going to, and, and yes. then, um, I do like that there are programs out in the community that are in schools, like best buddies mm-hmm. that do expose and pair children on the spectrum, um, uh, or with special needs with, um, with the okay. typical peer and, um, they're able to do various activities. Um, and yeah, um, I'm also, yeah, I'm hearing of other, um, yeah, there are a lot of other opportunities, including sports as well, where with Special Olympics, they have um, a number of special needs, needs kids on the field with neurotypical peers that they're also paired with that they are in their same high school. So that way, when they see each other in the hallways, they can, you know, socialize and stuff. So, yeah, there's some really good programs out there that, that help with that. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. L- let me do one of my favorite little parts here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's again, Mr. J.P. Fearclough. Let me just see how my uh, audience is interacting here. Uh, let's see here. Um, someone just said, wow, very interesting. DJ Beast, hi. Very interesting. We can apply to all children. Absolutely, we can apply to all children. Janice O'Shea, hello, Janice. Janice says, Exactly. Not only for kids with disabilities, positive and negative reinforcement. And Jenny's also says, love that backdrop, guest. Ha ha. There's a logo right there. Your, yeah. your backdrop is speaking volumes. And thanks for posting, Janice. 770. Let me pin that so the audience can see that information as we go. All right. Of course, it's going to give me a hard time to pin. Because I'm probably not in there as the Wayne Hall show. <laughs> probably in there as Wayne Hall. All right. Great information, Mr. LG, Leroy Griffith. Welcome. All right. And uh, I want to shout out everyone checking out the interview. Christine Rendell says, very informative interview. Peter Folks, this is interesting, says, that's how parents used to be when I was growing up in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. <laughs> Natalie Lawrence says, I love this. So, Shout out also to my viewers on Instagram, by the way. Great information. Thank you so much for making time, sir, to share with our audience about, um, uh, you know, just ABA, your ABA services, but in particular, autism. Let's take the next few minutes and uh, just talk a, a little bit more about some of the, you know, regular questions I get about autism. For instance, mm-hmm. I've always had to tell young neurotypical kids that autism is not something contagious. We don't need to scorn our friends. We don't need to, you know, be standoffish. I know it's scary to see behavior that's not normal. Um, what advice can you give along this line? Um, I mean, when it comes to some of those behaviors that occur, of course, they, they are different. But, you know, we, we have our own automatic behaviors that we may do ourselves. But, you know, we, we have the awareness to do the, to do those private events, you know, in private, where, whereas with, you know, with our children on the spectrum, they may not conceptualize it um, or be, or may not care about the social aspects of performing those behaviors. So um, if, if it's, if it's a behavior that is such as like hand flapping, if that's something that they decide to do at that time, um, it doesn't require, you know, interaction with a peer. And so if they want to do it, they'll go ahead and, and, and do that behavior. Um, you know, um, our goal when it comes to behaviors like that, uh, we do our, and it kind of, it kind of depends because behaviors like hand flapping aren't, aren't really the number one behaviors that we want to target to reduce. We want to target behaviors that are more severe, you know, okay. the, the self injurious behaviors and stuff. So um, we do, we do need to, you know, contemplate and see whether or not that is a behavior worth um, changing because we we do want to respect their individuality you know they're 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 their own persons just like you and me and um, they should be able to express themselves the way that you know they that they see fit 
That's such a great point because a lot of uh, frustration can sometimes lead to persons being aggressive towards the autistic individual, it, mm -hmm. you know. And one thing we always have to keep in mind is their integrity, you know, because that has to come before everything else. But it's so easy to just go, oh, man, and be, you know, frustrated and, and, and you know, um, yeah. Do you, uh, in your practice, what do you recommend for parents? Do you actually do that too? Because one of the things I've observed in the autism community is that sometimes the parents are at their wit's end. So other than calling fear cloth ABA, <laughs> you know, what are some of the suggestions for parents? Uh, and um, do you provide that? Um, yes, just for parents, um, that we do have parent training uh, goals for, for each of our parents. Um, we, we target about two skills. And um, and throughout that time, we will have a competency questionnaire that we will have to fill out um, in order to keep track of, you know, whether they're making gains on those goals, uh, whether or not they, whether it's, they're keeping up with data collection of those particular goals. Um, other resources that I'd like to share, if um, if I could um, get on the share screen. Do I have access? Yes, go ahead and share. Oh, it, it, post, it, the post disabled participants. Oh, screen let screen. me. Oh my goodness. Let me access let real me quick. Make and, sure um, you have that, sir. Yeah, because uh, I have a really good resource that I'd like for us to to review, and then we can end up putting this um, website. We can end up pinning it as well. Um, it's a variety of toolkits that uh, that cover a whole lot of areas. Um, that that way any parents that have any questions, we'll be able to use this resource to-, to Please to, try to share again, please. All right. Um, Let's see if it works. Okay, yep, I see it. Okay, awesome. He's sharing, right. there you go. So this um, particular website is linked with uh, Autism Speaks. Um, and here's the link here. It has a variety of toolkits um, that we could use um, when I, I use this when I'm meeting with new parents. So if we have any particular um, things that we're trying to target in particular behaviors, and um, it's just an additional resource to help support the parents. Um, for instance, here we have a hundred day toolkit um, for newly diagnosed families on on like what to do. Um, if you guys can see, is yeah, uh, is there any way to have the if, if it shifted a little bit, that would be probably to your left. The end of the sentences are not, for some reason, showing on oh. my broadcast stream. But but we can see the the main bulk of the info. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, it's a... Uh, Maybe shrink your uh, screen uh, a little bit. Okay, let me see. Uh, Take the zoom down just a notch. All right. How's that? Um, we still can't read to the end of the sentences, but we can see the actual websites and mm -hmm. topics. So I think that's great. All right, and um, I can kind of scroll through here. Um, Eva has guides for clinicians providing feedback to families affected by autism, a friend's guide, grandparent's guide, um, guide for managing um, things like constipation, a parent's guide for wow. ADHD, parent's guide to autism, toilet training, that's uh, another a uh, skill that um, we usually uh, apply for our, our younger clients that are, to are not toilet trained yet. Uh, a sibling's guide to autism, a toolkit for advocacy, um, introductions to behavioral health treatments, mm -hmm. um, even in Spanish in different language. Wow. Languages. Awesome. Uh, the area of uh, Asperger's syndromes, high functioning autism. Uh, area of autism medication, safe and careful use, uh, autism friendly youth organizations, um, even how to, you know, for drawing blood, parents guide and the provider's guide for that, challenging behaviors. Wow. Uh, community based skills assessments, uh, all right. dental profession, professionals toolkit. Ooh. Yeah, uh, across a variety of areas, even for employment. Exploring feeding behaviors in autism, financial planning toolkits, um, first concerns to action, haircut training guide, uh, including EEGs. Again, a variety of areas that um, 
that we have available to share with our, our families and the community. Um, another resource I'd like to go over can, real quick. Might can you to... shrink that? Just shrink that a little bit. Yeah, oh. shrink that. Make it smaller in terms of the Zoom, not bigger, smaller. Yeah, so it fits more on the screen. All right. So, yeah, yeah. continue. There you, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not really following. Oh, it's my not allowing it. Okay, no but problem. Um, we get the gist of it. We're seeing okay. the main bulk of it. Yeah, and then for any parents who are interested in training on how to become an RBT, just understanding the basics, uh, introductory um, principles, uh, such as, you know, positive negative reinforcement. Um, we do have this free RBT training course, this online training course that um, I, I'd like for you guys to check out. And it's through the Autism Partnership Foundation. Right. Um, again, it's free. So we definitely um, would like to share this. Uh, I have some parents on my caseload who've completed the this, this resource here, just again, to understand more about the importance of the principles of ABA, the importance of the data collection and stuff. Right. Right. And that's, yeah, that's it. Awesome um, stuff. Sure. Thank you. I did not expect the presentation, but that's Mr. JP Fearclaw. The man is thorough. I have some questions here before we wrap up. Can adults develop autistic behavior? Um, well, autism is a developmental disability, so it's going to be it's going to be a condition that uh, that should have been present or should have been shown at least by, and I, I can't even, I'd have to go ahead and, and look at my research to, to say the exact date or the exact age, but at least by age eight, there should be symptoms or there should be, yeah, yeah. Observing. you should be able to tell something either socially, you know, whether it's, you know, if they have Asperger's, they have social right. uh, things going on. So, yeah. Um, but but that those would be things that have been a problem throughout early the, on early early yeah. on second. and another question that was from dj beast can another question mm -hmm. is from janice oshia now this guest gets to one point one of the you just showed us some resources but she's asking how can the public in general be educated on how to respond or not to this particular behavior i guess um she mm -hmm. was referring to an example earlier but yeah. resources, I guess, is where she's aiming here. Oh, well, yeah, I'd go back to those toolkits that I, I um, shared, um, you know, those guides to, you know, if you're a parent or even a friend of someone on the spectrum, I'd say that would be probably be the best um, toolkit to review to see how to respond to those that you may interact with on the spectrum. Very good information. Mm -hmm. All right. So those are some great resources. Thank you for sharing. There's, is there anything else, sir, that I might not have touched on that you would like to share with us before you go? Um, no, I think that was it. I'm definitely looking forward to continuing um, any further discussions on, a, an, on, another, on another show. Um, if you guys have any other questions, any follow-up questions. I'm sure. You know what? I'll, I'll be pushing autism all year long, and I'll be, it will be my pleasure. Mm -hmm to Ooh. have uh, Faircloth ABA and you in particular, sir, come and share your um, wonderful knowledge with us. In fact, before you go, I found this very interesting, says Christine Rendell. My daughter was only talking to me yesterday that her best friend has a little boy with autism and has outburst of swear words and the granddaughter is copying him, her granddaughter is copying him and she was trying to work out how to handle it. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, that's, you know, call it call Fear Cloth ABA. That's yeah, gonna take gonna all call night. <laughs> <laughs> call Fear Cloth ABA 770-608-7317. That's correct. Oh my goodness. JP, <laughs> anything you wanna say before you go? No thanks. Uh, I think that was it. Um I'm, I'm honored and, and glad to have the opportunity to to be able to talk about the field of ABA on your platform, man. You're doing a great thing. Uh, just big ups, you know? By the way, ladies and gentlemen, JP is Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> the man of you hear him say? Big up. <laughs> All right, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You have a fantastic evening. Indeed. Continue to do great things to our community, man. Right, Fear Cloth ABA, look them up. Ladies and gentlemen, bye, JP. 
Thank nice you so much for your time today, my brother. Thank oh, you. man, what a great conversation. Wow, nothing like information, meaningful information. All right. Yes, uh, artistic children and parents out in public on lookers. Yes, sometimes we are looking too hard. We have Mr. Henry Wright. He's standing by. He's going to join me on Zoom right here and now. So, Mr. Wright, <laughs> I'm ready when you are, sir. All right, good deal. So, again, let me go back to some of the feedback and just welcome some guests here on the Wayne All Show this evening. All right, where do I start? Great information, Leroy Griffith. Natalie Lawrence, big up. Michelle Hannaford Hall says, good topic. That's right, First Lady. Oh, okay. Uh, DJ Beast, good question. All right. Good evening, Mr. Henry Wright. We're waiting for you, man. Come on, my brother. Jellicup Gordon, blessings flow maximum. Thank you, Jellicup Gordon, for joining us. And Andrea Brown McNeish, good evening and welcome to this edition of the Wayne All Show. We're going to take a short break right here. We'll be back with more right here for you. <laughs> Shabari CT Productions presents a Mother's Day comedy show. Come with laughter on Sunday, May 9th at Premier Restaurant and Lounge. Starring Johnny from Lime Tree Lane. Now, Rev Hitman is a Mother's Day show. Fancy Cat. And a fancy fat one. Fancy Cat. Fancy Cat. The Haitian Sensation. Sammy the Boy. And hosted by Pretty Boy Floyd. With music by Mark Dragon. Doors open at 4 p.m. Showtime, 7 p.m. sharp. Tickets are $35 pre sold. $45 at the door. $90 VIP includes. Dinner and a glass of wine. Get your tickets today at to Mom with Laughter Comedy Show. Daddy Ben Brack. Is that not a mother of this show? To Mom's with Laughter. Or call 312 479 3693. This coming Mother's Day, it's to Mom with Laughter Comedy Show on Sunday, May 9th at Premier Restaurant and Lounge, 6924 Main Street in downtown Lithonia. Now leave this island paradise to come back to charge Just with me laugh. Victoria Mutual Building Society is opening the door to more financial opportunities in Jamaica for you with our VMBS representative office in Florida. We're pleased to give Jamaicans and Caribbean nationals easy access to our full range of financial solutions, including savings products at competitive rates and opportunities for home ownership. Call us today at 305-770-2643 or visit us at the Siena Shops Miramar. All right, so let's continue here. With that. What kind of color on your album? On Saturday, Saturday May 1st, Jabari, Jabari Productions is inviting out all the ladies for Candy Crush. Ladies, ladies Night Out at Premier Lounge and Restaurant. That's right, right, ladies, Candy Crush. Featuring dance halls and newest and baddest female, female artists. artists. I'm in Muir. Muir. It's very it's very it's it's Muir. 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 Ladies Night Out. Oh, Candy Crush. Also, live in concert, the sensational Tiffa. Music by DJ Nini, DJ Insane, and Hot Rod. Early bird tickets $25. Tier 1 tickets $30. At Candy Crush ATL. Free lollipops for ladies on entry. Shania Muir and Tiffa Tiff live in concert for Candy Crush. Ladies Night Out on Saturday, May 1st at Premier Lounge and Restaurant, 6924 Main Street in Lithonia. Hi, my name is Jennifer A. Block. I am a mortgage broker and attorney at law for more than 21 years. My entire life has been dedicated to the real estate industry. So stop dreaming about buying that property. Let my ability to secure financing within as little as 11 days work for you for that best rate, fast close financing option. Call 1-800-466-0664. That's 1-800-466-0664. Or visit rapidmortgageloans.me. Visit rapidmortgageloans.me for your pre-approval and to request a quote for financing. Thank you. Alba. Oh, this 
this Memorial Weekend, soccer fans get ready for the first annual Atlanta Celebrity Soccer Match on Monday, May 31st at South Gwinnett Park. Tell them no believe. Featuring dance hall celebrities like Matt Cabra, Lukey D, D. Inja, Kipridge, Yelly Ranks, also former reggae boy, Pepe Goodison, Bibi Gardner, Dean Sowell, Paul Young, and many, many more. Three exciting games under 14 Honduras versus Atlanta All-Star, Honduras versus Jamaica, then the Jamaica versus USA Celebrity Match. Me and my friend them Get your early bird tickets for $25 at AtlantaCelebritySoccerMatch.Eventbrite.com or AtlantaSoccerMatch.com. Kids under 12 free. The gates open at 12 p.m. First match starts at 1 p.m. For more information, call 312-479-3693. It's the first annual star-studded Celebrity Soccer Match. This Memorial Weekend, Monday, May 31st at South Gwinnett Park, 2015 McGee Road in Snellville. Brought to you by Jabari Productions in association with The Wayne Hall Show. Yes, yes. All right. Welcome back after that short break right here on the Wayne All Show. All right. So we're going to get into another conversation here about autism, this time with a parent. All right. So I want to welcome uh, uh, Henry. He is getting in on Zoom right now. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, please stand by for that. But right now, it's a good as time as any to share some breaking news right here on The Wayne All Show. I always like to share breaking news. What's the breaking news right now? Well, here's a website that's being launched right now that's here to support parents of autistic children. And the website, you got to write this down, autismparentssupport.com. That's autism, A-U-T-I-S-M-P-A-R-E-N-T-S-S-U-P-P-O-R-T dot com. All right. So be sure to check out autismparentssupport.com before tonight is over. Okay. And you can recommend it to folks you think can benefit as well as if you need some kind of support to help you find your place at least to know how to navigate the, even the resources out there. Autism Parent Support is the perfect website for you to check out. Ladies and gentlemen, I think my guest is ready, Mr. Henry Wright. So I'm gonna go over to Zoomland and say, good evening and welcome. Before tonight is over, okay? My uh, right. brother, my brother. I'm getting a feedback, like you need to turn me down there somewhere. Need okay. some kind of support okay. to help you find yeah. your place. At yeah, I'm here. All right, good. Will you be able to hear if you turn me down there? You're muted. Henry, can, can you hear me? You're muted. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Wright is the father of an autistic child with a very amazing journey that he's going to share with us tonight. So, Henry, we're ready when you are. Can you hear me? Uh, he's busy looking at his screen. He's probably not looking at my screen right now. All right, Henry, say something when you're ready so I know you're ready. You're muted right now. Please unmute. Can you unmute? Yeah, you, your mic is showing muted. All right, so there you go. All right, good evening, sir. Oh, my brother, my brother, I apologize for the technical difficulties. Am I coming in okay? One, two, one, two. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mike it. Check. You I know, love I'm all, it. Uh, Jersey, New Yorker, so, you know, that's the way to come on. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's the greatest comeback ever from any form of technical difficulties. One, two, one, two, coming back right at you. I hear you loud and clear, sir. Henry, good evening and welcome. Thank you, my brother. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to, to be on with you. Uh, I'm glad I caught that information uh, from your uh, last guest that was on. It was, it was really great information, and I'm, I'm so glad that there, there are so many people paying attention and, and making a difference, uh, quite different than we um, as a family, how we came through almost 14 years ago with no resources at all. And that's what I want to talk about tonight, Henry. I want you, because I just feel like your experience, just like we had a professional speak just now, but I feel like as a parent, 
you'll be able to share so much in an intimate way about your experience with autism. So sure. just tell us, how, how, um, how, how, what was the age? Uh, so your son is Victor. Tell us about that, the age sure. of his diagnosis or when you found out. And what? just walk us through this journey. I, I will. And uh, so uh, Victor was five years old. Uh, now, uh, the beginning of elementary school, just finished kindergarten, and we got called to a meeting, uh, I'll never forget, in the, in the library, and they had the counselor there and one of his teachers and said, uh, listen, we think that uh, your son is autistic. Now, and I said, um, so which are you um, have your uh, different degrees that have um, already looked at my son and made his determination. What are you using to base that off? Because as a parent, we're thinking we're just coming for a regular chat to meet. And so we're blindsided. Wow. Um, and I said, so what, what are you using to measure this? And she just, she said, well, just my gut feeling. I go, wow. And I never forget this, brother Wayne. She said this, she goes, oh, don't worry. It's not a death sentence. Wow. Now, just imagine, you know, um, this is your child. Yes. Um, you, you come in there and you hear this, and they said, it's not a death sentence. And didn't have any resources for us. We walked out of the school, and we were numb. Uh, didn't know what to do. Wow. And, I, and I'll tell you that um, I was in denial for mm -hmm. almost a year. That now my wife, the the um, you got to give credit to the ladies. The ladies have a sixth sense, and you know I'm a I'm a uh, pretty smart man because I listen to my wife. Okay, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she says, uh, "Honey, there's 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 something different. There's something different that's going on." So, what we did is at that point. Um, we went into let's find it. I had to Google what it meant. What is autism? I, I heard something, but I didn't know what, what it was and so forth. So when for the next year, I took it on like this was my full time job. I dove in to find out everything, any publication, any specialist, any groups out there. I wanted to find out everything I can do. So um, th to bring you up how the process went, at the point, and we're talking about now, you know, 13 years ago, even the doctors um, didn't have a good grasp of what was going on. Wow. So they wanted to start um, with a battery of tests, and some of the tests were pretty tough. Um, that it was tough for us to go through this situation, but we said, you know, with the, with you know, God on our side, we're just going to do the best um, for our son. So um, he was diagnosed at first with autism and ADHD. A lot of times that goes together that I've, I've seen in my, in my experience over these years. And then we went from doctor to doctor to finally find a doctor who says your son has Asperger's. Mm. Now, didn't know what that meant. And I knew the fight was on with insurance companies from the door because they were not covering autism or ADHD. It was not covered. Wow. Uh, so our life um, over this next few years was therapy of two to three times a week for speech, occupational therapy. And, and the story gets better, but at this point, um, we couldn't even go to church because it was overwhelming. The sensory issues was overwhelming. So the loud things of us, we grew up, see, I'm Baptist. And so we get it in, we go to church. Right. You know, we talk about make a joyful noise. Oh, uh, we make it in my church growing up. There you go. Uh, we got the band going, we got everything going. So for him, this would be overwhelming. Right. Um, the fireworks was insane, like for 4th of July and, and New Year's was the two worst days of our life because wow. of the fireworks going on. So um, we had a change. I'll bring you up to about 10. Mm -hmm. There was a there was start to be a breakthrough 
um, that we started doing our own thing of saying, what if we start to introduce Victor on our on a different pace to these different things? And I'll give you my one example. I went and met with a good friend of mine, Pastor Rusty. Uh, he's here in, in my little town. And I went to talk with him to get some counseling. And I said, I want to bring my son to church. And he's going to be overwhelmed. He said, I tell you what, you bring him next Wednesday, and it's just going to be me, you, and Victor. And we're going to have Victor go through the entire church, go where he does anything he wants to do. And then we're going to sit down and say the only thing different is going to be some people here when you come back on Sunday. Now, sounds very easy, sounds very trivial. Right. But the, this was the starting point for us of the breakthrough. Great, great. So we started uh, doing that slowly of bringing them into uncomfortable situations. Right. Now, we were holding him back where I was holding him back of trying to coddle him too much. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. So we had to, we, so the first week we sat in the very back row, very back pew, sat, sat in there. I let him bring his headphones just in case he wanted to put it on. Well, I got to tell you, it turned the switch. The switch was turned and we slowly started going to church, right? Moving up closer. Right. No headphones, leave them in the car. And so I go, well, if this works for, for this, let's try it on these other different things. Because here's, I only speak for our family. We're not for medication, um, especially what I've seen personally, what I've done. So we believe in natural, and we believe that we're going to work through this with great therapies. And I'm not knocking it if some parents choose that. But in our house was no. Gotcha. So the medication they choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they wanted to put on for the ADHD was such a strong medication. When you're reading the side effects, it says suicide tendencies and thoughts. Wow. That's tough for a young kid that's going through and doesn't have a great, um, you know, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and speech and so forth. Mm-hmm. So um, we tried it. Um, we tried it for two days, and he got very nervous from it. So I told my wife, I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. This weekend, he's not going to be on that medication with me. And we're going to, whatever they gave us, we're going to cut it in half and we're going to scale back. Okay. Right. So um, let it go for the first week. Teacher didn't say anything. The second week, there was no medication. And I said to her on Friday, how'd Victor do? She goes, he was a a little bit hyper, but he did fine. I said, bingo, there's no more medication for our kid. (laughs) I love it. But that's the way to do it, though. Um, If you're going to wean off the medication is to allow him with his natural resources to develop some self-reliance while taking away the foreign substance. So that was great. And it yeah. worked. I'm glad it, it worked. And he's never been back on meds, right? Never been back on, uh, on meds and, you know, at all. I got to tell you that we work with a, a very close with a couple of great organization that they believe in uh, given the experience. Now, when he was um, at uh 11, we got him his first cell phone. And let me tell you what, we bought two things. We bought um, something where he had to communicate and started texting. And we were going to use that tool as the phone. You want to communicate with dad, you're going to have to type these words out. Okay. Now, what we did to help is that we said, okay, why don't we tap into some of these resources that we have the Google sources and so forth. And we started, we got that for his room. So he would say, Alexa, how do you spell so-and-so? Okay. We, we use those pieces Mm -hmm. where, where he started using that to communicate with others. So if he didn't have the grasp with spelling, 
he would use that those type of means of technology to use and that's started changing everything with his communication great, great. now i'll bring you up to the last few years unfortunately a lot of our kids get left out as a parent it's the worst thing to see they don't get invited to the party they don't yeah. get invited here mm -hmm. don't get invited there and so forth and as a parent it hurts it really hurts so um a few years ago um he started to get really good in swimming this was his breakout game we got him in to special olympics okay you go victor now i was the one holding him back because i grew up as an athlete i played basketball at rutgers out of new jersey and so i was in that another part of denial saying my kid doesn't need that mm. my kid doesn't need that well right. this is what i hear to share with you and, and your listeners that sometimes the parent is in the way awesome point we yes. have to think what's best for our children and get out of the way so let me tell you how it is so we got into special olympics swimming well he made new friends we found out the swimming is on every level from barely can get into the pool to heavy competition mr wayne he went on to win uh, several medals at the state level he went on to make his high school swim team this is his third year on the high school swim team he just earned his letter for swimming. He's swimming with um, with a team that does a triathlon now. It has opened up his mind. It's opened up his opportunities because of we took him through this. Right. And right. there is no limits. There is no limits. So now at this point that he is independent, where we got him uh, just two years ago, we got him used to taking his own Uber. You want to go to practice? We're going to take an Uber, my friend. That's so great. What a great story. Yeah. You know, Henry, in lieu of time, we got about three minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what would be the main takeaway? I'm just so thrilled to hear how well he's doing now. You said sometimes the parent get in the way. That's like one of the main things. Michelle Hannaford always says preach. Andrea Brown McNeese says, wow, excellent. Uh, so the you know the the audience is really connecting with what you're sharing, but in lieu of time, what else? Because man, you're gonna have to come back. We got so much we're gonna need to talk about. Oh, There'll be sure, a part. Sure. They'll have to be a part two, Henry. Sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but um, you. So how would you say to the audience? You know what are some like from your experiences. Mm -hmm how you'd like to see as a parent, the general population treat autistic individuals? You know, the, and that's a great point. And this is what I, I think about. I always say, what if it's your kid? Mm -hmm. How would you want your kid to be treated? Yes. Great and if you keep that in the front of your mind, because it could, whether it's your kid, your grandson, your nephew, your niece, and so forth, you just want them to have respect. Now, another thing with parents, that some people, if they see a special needs situation, they think it's taboo to even ask about it. It's not. If you ask permission. So because of understanding sometime, a kid might be having a meltdown. So I think it's important, to, I guess, to one piece to share someone who maybe is not on the spectrum and sees something it's okay for permission to say hey i'm just curious is there something you might share with me because i want to understand would you mind and i will tell you as a parent we will gladly share our our story and our information so don't back away and you don't think you can make contact because of something we encourage it right we encourage it. So the only thing I can share with you in, in this last uh, couple minutes is this. Being involved and finding people to talk to, and i got to say one thing, uh, Mr. Wayne, before I leave, 
especially to the dads out there. The dads are the one that give up. Oh. When you look at a divorce rate with special needs, you will see that it's somewhere between 60 and 70%. And I hate to say this to my boys out there and brothers, but overwhelmingly, it's the man. And so I want to challenge you, good man. These, these are beautiful kids and so forth. You put that pressure just for the wife to do that. So if you get anything from me from today, is have courage. All right. Well, thank you for that. But before you go, real quick, as yes, quickly sir. as you can tell us, tell us about that parking space at school. Well, I got to tell you, Mr. Wayne, that, you know, one of these things that we have as a senior, that yes. we have a parking space that you that's yours. You design it, you paint it, and so forth. Well, my son Victor doesn't swim, but he's a senior. So I went to the principal. He doesn't said, drive. Excuse me, he doesn't drive. Pardon okay. Me. And I Good. said to um, said to the principal, I said, listen, he's entitled for this. So why can't we make this available? And he says, no one has ever asked. He says, Mr. Wright, get your supplies, get Victor, bring the family and go paint that spot. And as of today, we have that beautiful spot with the emblem on it with his name. And it says autism, no limits, Victor Wright all over it. And we're very proud of it. Awesome. You couldn't go and not share that, man. I love that. That's called inclusive, inclusion, inclusiveness. Yes. That's right. Thank I, you. I hope the next time I come back, we can talk about what our police involvement, what we're doing with stickers that is going on automobiles. So if the people get stopped, they'll know, they'll handle with care. It is a big initiative that we just started. And, and, I, and I hope to at least forward the information to you. Yes. I tell you, we're definitely going to have a part two, Henry. Um, okay. we, we're going to have to get you on when we have more time to yes, dive into some of this. But in this Autism Awareness Month, this was great. And I, and I truly appreciate you taking the time to come on our and platform. And I thank you for what you do. I thank you for what you stand for. God bless you. And I, and I look forward to chatting soon. All right. You take care, sir. You have a okay. wonderful rest of the evening, Mr. Henry Wright, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Oh, my word. Aren't these conversations great? I cannot have too many of these conversations. And I know I'm a little biased, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm a little biased, but I truly love when I hear stories like this, especially about our autistic population. So keep it up, Mr. Wright. You're making uh, the all autistic population proud. Thank you very much for your time this evening. All right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at 17 minutes past the hour, and we're going to keep it moving because Janice O'Shea is going to have the Caribbean infotainment report up next right here on the Wayne All Show. <laughs> them vex ha <laughs> ha okay ladies and gentlemen it's that time of the week when you should have been here you should have heard janice already but for a great reason janice was very very kind to let us have a little bit of her time 
And uh, we won't have Anthony Turner, so it worked out this evening. Janice O'Shea, welcome with the Caribbean Infotainment Report. How are you? Good evening, Wayne. How are you doing? I am doing great, <laughs> Jen. I'm doing great. <laughs> well, it, it definitely worked out with your two guests and then the Infotainment Report coming up immediately after. I enjoyed both of them. This is a topic that it just piques your interest if you're not familiar at all with that disability. It's so, so interesting just to listen how to deal with the behavior. Well, good evening, everyone. This is Janice O'Shea with your weekly Caribbean Entertainment Report. For all your new listeners, it's generally at 9 p.m. The Wayne Hall Show is 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. each and every Wednesday. And this segment comes on at 9 p.m. So thank you for hanging in there. When we start off this week with, let's see, Saturday. Saturday the 1st, Canis. Canis has the fish fry back by popular demand. And the DJ is none other than DJ Wayne Hall. This is one that has been ongoing, Wayne. So just tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. That particular event. That's right. You know, with the opening up, you know, comes more fish fry. So the first, this Saturday uh, from 5 p.m., man, come through, get your fish. How you want your fish, that's Kenneth's wish. Just get it in a favorite dish and enjoy. All right? And that's going to be from 5 until you say when. Right there at KNS 2300 Liam Avenue in Decula, ladies and gentlemen. Music courtesy of the Wayne All Show. Music and more. You know we are more than just music. We are a presence. Much, much more. Yes. So <laughs> come through. Great ambiance. All great right. Show, great entertainment. <laughs> also this Saturday, the Food for Families continue. This one will be in Marietta, Georgia. The Act 2 Community Church. It drives through from truck to trunk. This location is at 1951 Canton Road in Marietta, and it starts at 10 a.m. until supplies wrap. So if you would like to pick up a box for a neighbor or for a friend who probably cannot make it out to participate in these food drives, please do so. This is being presented by the Lions International of Georgia, the Atlanta Jamaican Association, and Friends on the Corner, FOTC. So the collaboration is those three organizations will will have volunteers on hand to assist with this drive-through. There is a virtual concert this Saturday. For those of you who might be familiar with the Foster Triplets out of Jamaica, the Foster Triplet Ministries will be part of a gospel virtual concert. I do not have all the information on that, but it's going to be live on Facebook this Saturday evening. So that's another event for May 1st. On the 8th, Saturday, May 8th, it's the monthly meeting of the Atlanta Jamaican Association each and every second Saturday. And the association is also doing a volcano relief for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The donations may be dropped off at Caribbean International Shipping Services, one of the sponsors of the Wayne Hall Show. So there are several donation opportunities in Atlanta, Metro Atlanta right now. St. Lucia Association, the Caribbean Association of Georgia, and different groups are accepting donations. Oh, uh, oh, this this Memorial Weekend Soccer Fans! On the 9th, it's Mother's Day to Mom with Laughter. This is a comedy show that will be held on Sunday, the 9th, and it will be at the Premier Restaurant and Lounge, hosted by Pretty Boy Floyd, starring Johnny from Landry Lane in Jamaica, Fancy Cat, and a Haitian Sensation. So this will, doors open at 4, and the event starts at 7 p.m. This takes us down to Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend is the big 
Soccer, the first Atlantic Celebrity Soccer Weekend. There will be three games, and none other than the host of this show will be a part of the celebrity game, Mr. Wayne Hall. So we will wait to see what position he will play. <laughs> yes, I'm going to definitely play a position. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to be a surprise. Where, where, where on the field you will be. Also that weekend <laughs> is the Atlanta Georgia Relays International Track Meet. This will be at the McDonough High School, 155 Postmaster Drive. Registration is at www.coachocho.com. It will be live streamed. So we have time for more details on that. Those are two of the bigger events in Atlanta on that particular weekend. And we know there will be several carnival-themed events as well that That's last right. weekend. Okay. That last weekend in May. So, Wayne, do you have anything that I may have missed and not on the report? Well, chance, I'm not going to be there, but that's one of my favorite events growing up in Jamaica, Boys and Girls Champs. The Issa Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Championship is going to be May 11th to May 15th. I personally know of persons going home just for that weekend. Yeah, Champs is a staple, man. If you can, don't Yeah, Champs is, yeah. Well, I, big signature event in Jamaica. I do have one event, Janice, and I'm going to take you all the way back to the first. That's this Saturday, starting at 10.30 a.m. until 12 p.m. It's a free drive through food, free, free drive through distribution. <laughs> farmers, Say that 10 times, Wayne. Free drive through <laughs> distribution. Here's the kicker. Farmers to families, food, Boxes, <laughs> clothing, <laughs> household items, and more. All right, so it's a free drive through and distribution. Jamaica Farmers Project USA. Courtesy of the Jamaica Project USA. Shout out to Miss Jekyll Tucker, to the Tuckers. Okay. All right, and again, it's at the Sugar Hill Church, which is 5091 Nelson Brogdon Boulevard, Sugar Hill, Georgia, in Gwinnett County. Yeah, you great, know, you great, know. great. You must stay in your vehicle in order to be served. Pull up, pop your trunk, and items will be placed in your trunk. All right, they're practicing social distancing. Please wear a mask. First come, first served. This Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. Right over there at Sugar Hill Church. Free, free drive-through distribution, courtesy of the Jamaica Project USA. Farmers to families. All right, ladies and gentlemen. There you go, Marietta Sugar Hill. And speaking of social distancing and wearing your mask, Wayne, we do know that now we it's recommended that we can wear our mask around our family. We don't have to, except for when we're in large crowds. Did you hear that? Yes. Yes, yes. That's great. That's progress, yes, yes. right? That's where we want to get Yeah, to. that's that's definitely progress. And um, President Biden will be in Atlanta tomorrow. And as we speak, the joint address is currently being aired. That's a joint address to Congress starting at 9 p.m. Eastern time. All right. So, yes, that, that's good news. Partial vaccinations is a big concern. Because there are many people who are not returning for the second dose. So that's a concern right now. People are not following the guidelines to be fully vaccinated. So I hope that gets better because what's the point of getting just one? Right, right. So here's the deal mm -hmm. before you go real quick. Autism parent support. Um, you know, I am t pushing the site right now. It's launched. It's official, the website, and Janice, I'm telling you, you need yes. to check it out, because you might know folks you can refer to the site. And Oh, uh, most definitely. It's near Autism and dear. Parent Support. Okay. It's autism Parent Support. It's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> it has been a work in progress, <laughs> and it's my pleasure yes. to break it with you right here for the first time. Autism Parent Support is now live. 
courtesy of yours truly. All right. And Heard hater yes. tonight. That's okay. Right. That's right. And so we're going to be spreading the word. There is a help for parents to at least get them going in terms of finding a, 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 a position on how to move forward yes. with autism in their families. So, um, yes. Yes. All right. And I think that's so, so needed, Wayne. Even listening to you Monday night and to your guests tonight, it, it definitely feels like parents in general need that type of support. It is. It so, yes. It, mm -hmm. it is really needed. And I, I, I really am doing it with, with all the, the, the sincerest um, thoughts and feelings. I have a lot of resources, just like I have had on the show. And it's not going to be just a I, I, I project. It's going to be a community effort. You know, there, there's a web, yeah. there'll be a private group as well on Facebook for anyone who, yeah. uh, you know, registers through the website where they can ask questions and get feedback and support. It's to support parents. It's to, the, it's something it you, you don't learn in school how to deal with autism. And, you know, yeah. it's one thing to just get up and know your child has autism, but what do you do next other than Google and read? So, I think it's a great asset, and the pandemic really taught us how much more parents need to know, at least to be positioned yes. to do the minimum with their autistic children. So, looking forward to working with some autistic, some parents of autistic children. Some parents. Well, let me let me be the first way to take this opportunity to say congratulations. I know um, you will be, this is your baby, your website, your passion, and you will be working, as you said, with, with other affiliates and the parents, autismparentssupport.com. That's right. That's right. Autism yes, yes, yes. Janice, Alrighty. last thing I'm going to say to you before you go, last thing I'm going to say to you, the next <laughs> conversation waiting. is going to be hot. Don't miss it. It's uh -huh. Okay, so Coming up. that's supposed to be a teaser. Am I supposed to be nervous, Wayne? Should I get nervous about it? Just make sure the children are in bed. <laughs> tease, tease, <laughs> tease. Make sure the children are in bed. And let's do this. All right. Jenny, thank okay, you so much. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Let me jump on and get teased. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. You have a great <laughs> okay. one. Bye, Janice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the fun continues right here on the Wayne Hall Show. The information meets the music right here. And, you know, um, it, it's going to be a great conversation coming up, all right, with Miss Marie Dunn, the author of uh, Tease. And she is standing by, and I'm going to get with her right after this break right here on the Wayne Hall Show. This Memorial Weekend, soccer fans get ready for the first annual Atlanta Celebrity Soccer Man on Monday, May 31st at South Gwinnett Park. Featuring dance hall celebrities like Matt Cameron, Lucy D, Z, and Kimbridge, Lenny Rand, also Fumo Reggae Boy, Pepe Goodison, Bibi Gardner, Dean Sweat, Paul Young, and many, many more. Three exciting games under 14 Honduras vs. Atlanta All Star, Honduras vs. Jamaica, then the Jamaica vs. USA Celebrity Match. Me and my friend. Get your early bird tickets for $25 at Atlanta Celebrity Soccer Match .com or Atlanta Soccer Match .com. Kids under 12 free. G gates open at 12 p.m. First match starts at 1 p.m. For more information, call 312 479 3693. It's the first annual star studded celebrity soccer match this Memorial Weekend, Monday, May 31st, at South Gwinnett Park, 2015 McGee Road in Snellville. Brought to you by Jabari Productions in association with The Wayne Hall Show. Jabari CG Productions presents a Mother's Day comedy show to mom with laughter on Sunday, May 9th at Premier Restaurant and Lounge, starring Johnny from Lime Tree Lane. Jaja, ja, now rap with me, it's a Mother's Day show. Fancy Cat, and the fat, the fat one, Fancy Cat, the fat, Fancy Cat. The Haitian Sensation, Stanley the Boy, and hosted by Pretty Boy Floyd, with music by Mark Jaja. Doors open at 4 p.m., showtime 7 p.m. sharp. Tickets are $35 pre-sold, $45 at the door, $90 VIP included. Dinner and a glass of wine. Get, get 
Get your tickets today at Tomorrow with Laughter Comedy Show. Eventbrite.com. It's a Mother's Day show to Moms with Laughter. Where will we go? Or call 312 479 3693. This coming Mother's Day, it's Tomorrow with Laughter Comedy Show on Sunday, May 9th at Premier Restaurant and Lounge, 6924 Main Street in downtown Lithonia. May I leave this island paradise to come there at Georgia just to make a laugh? International Shipping Services is your one-stop shop, for, one -stop all shop for all your shipping needs. All your Conveniently needs. located at 1348 Miller Road, Light Miller Road, Georgia. Georgia. We, we know all about the Caribbean and the Our wide range of services include weekly ocean and air services, 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 services empty barrels and boxes for sale, packing and crating, specialized returning resident services, personal and commercial shipping, door-to-door, local delivery and pickup, money transfers and shop and ship with Services by land, ear, and sea. You need to call Caribbean International Shipping Services today at 770-323-1111 or visit their website at info at mycaribship.com. At Caribbean International Shipping, we know all about the Caribbean and cargo. My name is Jennifer A. Block. I am a mortgage broker and attorney at law for more than 21 years. My entire life has been dedicated to the real estate industry. So stop dreaming about buying that property. Let my ability to secure financing within as little as 11 days work for you for that best rate, best close financing option. Call 1-800-466-0664. That's 1-800-466-0664. Or visit rapidmortgageloans.me. Visit rapidmortgageloans.me for your pre-approval and to request a quote for financing. Thank you. chains, the stereotypical roles assigned at birth, her word choices selective, underscoring sensitive sex matters, stigmas and expectations of a woman, recreating her canvas, having sex at her leisure for pleasure, but the one she loves, she promised never to fake an orgasm again. P.S. Sexuality is personal. It is critical for you to explore and understand those feelings. It is then, my friend, you will unlock the power that prowls within you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure. That voice you just heard, that quote you just listened to, it's my pleasure to welcome author Miss Toya J. Toya, good evening and welcome. Good evening. It is a pleasure to be here. Actually, it's night. I'm sorry, Toya. Let me make sure I'm hearing you well. Can you hear me? Can you hear oh, me? Loud Mike? and clear. Yes. Good. How are you? I am fantastic. How about you? Doing great. Doing great. It's a long anticipated conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anthony Turner has just talked about this on the last few editions of his segment, The E-Report, and so I couldn't wait to have you on as a guest. Toya, where do we start, man? Where do we start? Oh, we could start from, um, it's a beautiful day. It was a gorgeous day here in New York City. I love yes. the weather. The weather always puts me into like an awesome mood. So today was just one of those feel good hormones days because the weather was awesome. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Good deal. I love it. I love it. And so um, you're here to tell us about teas, right? We're going to talk about teas. But before we get to teas, tell us a little bit about you. I mean, 
um, where's Toya J from? And and the name Toya J, we're gonna we want to know about that too. So um, I am Marie Dunn. Legally, mm -hmm. that's my name. Right. I um, migrated from Jamaica here in 2001. Um, when I got to this country, I decided to go back and um, get some education because, you know, education is the key. Living in America, it's like you needed that, right? So I graduated from Fordham University in um, 2013 okay. with my master's in social work. I'm yeah. a social so, but actually I wanted to go to law school, but reality check, um, I didn't prepare myself well enough for the LSATs and I flunked it miserably. So I think my ego was bruised, but I've always wanted to be a social worker because I grew up seeing my mom giving back to the community and just loving and giving of herself selflessly. And I thought that was just like really awesome. So, you know, when times hit, I decided, and I think that's what was designed for me to become a social worker. And in 2017, I got injured on the job and okay. I was home for an extended period of time, fell into depression and being a single woman. And somehow I haven't figured out the connection between pain and wanting intimacy, wanting companionship. And I resorted to my safe space. Writing has always been my safe space, safe space and my therapy. And out of that blossom, these beautiful books that I've been writing, I started with Bold Her Liberation. It talks about my freedom and my sexuality as a woman. And yeah, I decided to just give people a tease before I go into book two. So here we are, here we are today. <laughs> a tease before you go into book two. So, Absolutely. so, so there, there are, um, so Tell, which of the books are we focusing as far as the um, erotic literature is concerned? So both books that I've had out already are erotica, um, but tonight we're going to be focusing on Tease because that's my recent release book. Okay, so we're going to yes. talk about Tease. Yes. So do tell, um, what, what's there to see and experience in Tease? Um, I would love to say that Tease is an instructional companion that gives women and dear lovers permission to explore the intimate self. Self-awareness, learning to communicate with each other, and keeping that fire burning in a relationship. I think for I think in life people get complacent in relationship at times. And I think that we can create that magic and we could have that fire, but it starts with how we communicate with each other, as well as the investments that we're making in these relationships. And it also starts with self. It's about self-awareness. If as women, we understand ourself, and this is where I talk about the exploration of the intimate self. If we understand what turns us on, then we can um, play such an integral role in our desires, our needs, and our wants, and it will just help our partner to understand us better and to have that experience, that good sex that we deserve. Wow. And and someone listening and hearing good sex, um, sex is so tabooed, right? Oh, sex tell me about it. Sex is such a tabooed subject in, 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 in our regular day yeah. and day in and day out life, that we often carry that taboo into our private relationships, you know? And, and so the, the freedom to explore and express yourself sexually is often, you know, under pressure in terms of expectations. So what will it be like reading Toya J's tease to the average reader in terms of how it could impact their sexuality and interpretation dealing with all these taboos <laughs> um so i think that's such um that's such an important point that you just made about yeah. that's being a taboo mm -hmm. and if you don't mind i would like to read one of my pieces on the very last page absolutely it's it's really important and i said we live in a, in an oversexed society Sex is a marketing strategy used to sell almost everything. 
Sex is forced upon us from the relentless images of sex in magazines, commercials, billboards. Sex, I believe, is commercialized. One would think that we are sexually open and permissive of sex. In my opinion, that seems far from the truth. Janet Jackson got in trouble for her wardrobe malfunction at a Super Bowl um, in 2004. The mixed messages that plague us magnify our confusion and contentions with sex. Ooh, let me dice. Oh, my goodness. Can you hold up the book for us? Hold it Absolutely. up, please. There Absolutely. you go. Teased by Toya J, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get into where we can find it and all that. But you just said a lot in that statement because that's a good seg um, follow for my observation about taboo, sex being taboo. But there are, you know, laws, I guess, rules and norms. And so... Um, Janet Jackson having a wardrobe malfunction, and I hope I'm not just die, staying too much too superficial here, but that um, connects with the fact that we have an audience where all ages are watching, right? Yes. But we don't want all ages to see any form of nudity, nudity before a certain stage of their lives, right? So one can understand if that was not the best received act that ever happened with Janet Jackson, don't you think? And to what extent are you making your point, though, especially against the backdrop that in order for sex to be that fulfilling, great thing, it also has to have some boundaries, isn't it? Absolutely. It can't be just a loose experience. Absolutely. And that's why I started there with this conversation tonight, mm -hmm. because I think because we shy away so much from sex because yeah. of our personal reasons and because, and we could take it back there. I'm from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Jamaica in the islands and there was not much conversations about sex in my household. The most conversation, it's like, if you have sex and you get pregnant, I'm putting you out of the house. That was sort of the narrative. Yeah. Sex was, um, it was considered, it's something in the dark. We don't talk about it. It's adult stuff, it's adult conversation. And I think because we don't have that informed conversation and because we're not communicating with it, there we go, we have all this. It's, it's mis the miscommunication, um, it's, it's interpreted wrong. Um, and why I'm saying that, for example, a man meets a woman on the street. There yes. is no conversation about where we are going with this. As a female, my interpretation is that if I'm having sex with you, it should mean something more. But for the man, not necessarily, right? So because we're not having that conversation about what it is that we want from each other and what our intentions are straight up, then that's where we have problems. Because like in your book, we My die. Book. Yes, we die and what next? <laughs> like I'm dead, now what? Yeah, there I'm dead, you go. Mm -hmm. exactly. So we have sex, now what? <laughs> because we didn't have that conversation up front. Right. Right. And it's my interpretation of what I think having sex with you is going to be like, and it's you, your interpretation that I just want it's for pleasure, because when you think about it, right, um, historically, women were see we were here to service men. Mm. Men were the hunters. Right. And our purpose as women was to satisfy that need. Yes. So because of that mixed messages, it's like we have to unlearn some of those behaviors, some of what was taught to us at a younger age, so we could arrive at a place where we could actually embrace it. Like I put in my book, I think, and I write more about sex than I'm actually having sex. Because as an adult now, where I have come into my womanness and I've recognized the spiritualness and the sacredness of sex, I'm not just going to have sex just because I want to. And this is where we talk about boundaries, but because I have an understanding. Yes. So it makes a difference. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Toya J, Miss uh, Marie Dunn, author of uh, the book Tease. And she's here this evening and she's just letting us have it as far as her take on, you know, our sexuality. Now, um, the book Tease is available it's out and available right where can we find it so you could actually go to my website www.bboldtoya.com that's www.bboldtoya.com 
or you could find it on Amazon. It's on Amazon, and it's, it's Amazon. by Toya J. Wow, wow. Um, so, for anyone whose curiosity is peaked right now, and they're already clicking on the website and all that, um, what's the main purpose? Again, you said it earlier, but. Mm -hmm. Please reiterate, what's your main purpose of writing this kind of literature? The main purpose of writing teas, and I'll go back to my why, it's giving women and dear lovers permission to explore the intimate self. Once you have that understanding and you're both communicating with each other, you're going to have that mind-blowing sex. And sex, it's not only about the physical for me, it's also about the mental stimulation that you can get from that. Because to me, sex starts from the mind. If you could get to me on that level where you're undressing my nakedness from my mind, that makes a lot of a difference because it's that mental orgasm. As a grown up, as a matured individual, I now understand and I have control over my sexuality. And I think it's also important because April is an amazing month. It's the it's the it, it's poetry month number one, and number two, it's sexual assault awareness month. And we as women, we have agency over our bodies. When we say no, it's no. That's also a piece I have in the book, because not because I may look a little provocative, I may seem a little sexy, right? Uh, whatever I am, I may have pink mm -hmm. lips, red lips. It's not an invitation that I need you to interact with me. So, um, great point. Yeah. How much do you think, as a Jamaican, that culture has influenced our sexual behavior? Personally, and um, this is all my experience and my opinion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot. I think it has probably like 80%, if you ask me, because like I said, I did not have that conversation. I did not have that knowledge. I did not know. So because I didn't know, I made decisions. I had no reason making. Sometimes I like to say, when I took my clothes off, I had no reason taking my clothes off because I wasn't ready to have sex, but I didn't understand. Oh my goodness. Ladies sex is an art, Toya it's a Jay. dance. You have to know it's a tango, it's a rhythm. You gotta understand each other and it starts from your mind. Man, there's a lot to digest where this topic is concerned. and. Uh... Um, we had some excerpts and I don't know if you can do any live for us. Absolutely. Um, I would love if you could. Um, we, I mean, feel free to share with our audience some of what they could find in your body of work. So I'm going to start with one of my favorite pieces. And I think, like I said, going back to women having agency over their bodies, mm -hmm. part really, um, this is like a clean, nice piece. Right. <laughs> no means no when she says no let her be do not allow your ego to influence your actions it's her body her right to decide to consent or not her vulnerabilities does not mean yes skimply dressed is not an invitation to violate be non-judgmental your perception does not give you the right to decide for her her silence is not a yes. Drunk yes is impaired. Red lips, pink lips, it's not a request for interaction. It's no, let her be. Stop. Don't make a conjecture. It's her body. P.S. No means no. Do not violate, even if it's your wife. Wow, deep. But I have some questions, um, Go right ahead. Taya. Go right ahead. Okay. No means no, mm -hmm. but we're in that delivery. I'm being the devil's advocate, by the way. Mm -hmm. We're in that delivery. Is there consideration for the fact that there are women who dress and leave very little to the imagination? Mm -hmm. A man is triggered in a sexual way a lot by what he visualizes. Absolutely. So... If you know that a man is triggered by what he sees even more sometimes than what he hears otherwise, why is it that some women think they should dress so skimpily? It, it shouldn't there be consideration? Shouldn't there be some form of a limit to that as well? Some balance? 
stop absolutely it. not absolutely no? not because i like like i think it goes back to the individual and who we are mm -hmm. and i think it's about learning and i think it's about growth right yeah and we know that men i don't have to be skimpy for a man to just like because even like the of my shoulders that yeah. could turn the man on and that could trigger his reaction right. so up to you to be able to control because i think men like to say they mm -hmm. had control over it but to me it starts in your mind it's just like you go to the store and you don't have money to purchase something and you have the decision to make either you ask for it or you leave it alone but it's totally up to you what you decide to do. So it's about consequences. It's about actions. It's about what you think or what you deem necessary or what you deem important. So to me, it's still not an excuse just because right. I know you're triggered. Good. I had to pull that out of you, Mary, <laughs> even though I agree with you. <laughs> I had to ask. Now, in terms of, um, you know, our sexual maturity and all that as a culture, because I want to base it on that because, you yeah. know, you said sex was only talked about in your upbringing as a warning if yeah. you get have sex and have a baby. And that speaks for a lot of people. We, we, we really are not from a culture where people sit us down and talk to us about even changes in our body. Yes. You know, um, I'll never forget the teacher that first pointed out to me what I was going through as a male with my own body. And I realized nobody else did. It didn't come from my parents. It didn't come from any other teacher. Just that one teacher at one point in my life. Now, they have different classes on, you know, educational stuff. But in, ter in general, it's just pretty much what your instinct tells you and what is talked about and what is practiced by the people around you, your peers. Absolutely. So... Do you think your literature will help to form some kind of breakthrough in the mindset that will break down some of the cultural barriers we established, we grew up with sexually? Absolutely, absolutely. That's where it starts. And like I said, I am using my skills and my experience mm -hmm. as a social worker to highlight this, to bring awareness, because it's about awareness. And I think it's like so bold of me to be having this conversation. Yeah. So I just, I'm out on the scene, like having this conversation, right? And being so edgy, but I think I needed that because I needed to grab people's attention first. Right. And if I grab your attention, then you could see where my dialogue is going, right? So my hope is especially for women and especially women that identify with me for us to recognize that it is okay. It is okay to say sex. It's okay to say foreplay and be comfortable. It's okay to say vagina. A lot of people are not comfortable with the base, like even calling the words. You're right. You're right. Yep. And, okay. and, you know, our body is so intertwined in that way with everything else we do that if we can say mouth and foot, we should be able to say penis and vagina, right? Exactly. And not feel like, you know. But then again, there are the rules, the taboos that we've been taught. You don't say this, you don't say that. Only behind closed doors or in private. So, whew. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Man, I can't believe the time flew by so fast, Toya. Just remind the audience where they can find your book, please, and your different contact information, social media wise. Absolutely. So you could pick up a copy of the book from my website, www.beboldtoya.com, or you could visit um, Amazon. It's on Amazon. And you could find me on Instagram at I am underscore Marie Dunn or Be Bold Toya. That's actually my poetry page. Um, so just, and you could Google. Just throw in a Google search and Marie Dunn or Toya J will pop up. I guarantee you that. All right. So to wrap up, can we have another piece before you go? Ah, absolutely. And this is probably a little bit, um, not really edgy. It, it's, 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 it's okay. And it's, um, it's untitled. Late night sex talk in the nest with your lover, engaged in pillow talk deep desires explored he shared he's tired of the missionary position she shared she fakes her orgasm the kink in her subdued she is not comfortable sharing that she would rather get spanked on her ass until her cheeks are flaming red sharing your passion desires likes and dislikes may minimize your partner having sex with another 
communication is likely to foster a healthy sexual relationship that intensifies intimacy. It is necessary to understand what stimulates each other sexually. She may desire excessive pore foreplay. He may want your furry furnace clean shaved for more visibility. Get out of your feelings like Drake and his feelings. Express yourself, engage your partner, be flirtatious. Introduce novelties into the bedroom, some chocolate covered strawberries, his or her favorite wine, adult toys, handcuffs, mask. Take risk together. You never know, you may like it. P.S. Say what you mean and feel. No need to mask those feelings because of the fear of being judged. Share your fantasies. You don't have to act on them. At least you will know what she is thinking and she will know what you're thinking. Well, wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> I want to say a very good night to my listeners on Hype FM, The Right FM, and islandworldwide.com. As you branch off, thank you so much for listening. Viscositiveblend.com. Thank you so much for carrying the way in all show. Rupi T, I see you on the feed, my brother. Thank you, Rupi T, the blender. All right. And to the Sutherlands and the Hype FM, Lady Tamoya and Frankie Lex. We're going to wrap up here, but I need to comment, make one more comment before I go. I listened to that last piece, and again, it's so reflective of the fact that we need to liberate ourselves. Yes. We need to free our minds. Yes. It's, not, it's not porn no, that it's you're not. promoting. No. It's not... Um, it's not, you're not saying forget societal norms and rules and regulations, but you're saying in the company, that special company, yes. there should be freedom. Let freedom reign. Ah, oh, Toya. <laughs> we could talk all night. <laughs> no, no. Very fascinating, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Toya J, Miss Marie Dunn, a.k.a. Toya J, and she's done a, a great, fascinating body of work on our human sexuality. Uh, one of the things we don't like to talk about, but you know what? It's great to have people like you who can present it in a way where we can absorb it, but don't feel offended. Absolutely. So thank you for that. All right. Very good conversation, Toya mm -hmm. J. All the best. I give you the final say, though. What would you like to wrap up with? I'd like to say thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and thank you to all of the listeners on, on the air at this point in time. And I am giving you permission to feel liberated and to explore the intimate self and communicate with self. And again, it's about freedom of the mind. Unlock those pleasures because you deserve it all. Have an amazing night, be great and be extraordinary. And thank you. We will close with the exposed neckline. All right. <laughs> Take care. Thank you so much. Okay. And it's been my pleasure. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great conversation with our guest, Miss Toya J. All right. And she has the book out, Tease. I encourage you to go and check it out. All right. Uh, Toya is on Amazon. The books are on Amazon, Tease and Be Bold and also available on our website. So, ladies and gentlemen, check that out. I'm sure you all got so quiet, though. We're talking about autism and everybody's commenting, and then we start talking about sex and everybody gets quiet. <laughs> I guess that's what you're talking about, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's okay. It's so okay. Yeah, it's okay. That's right. All right, so you have a good night. Thanks again. And let me thank all my listeners tonight for tuning in on The Way and All Show. It was so much more information than music, but I promise you I'll make up for the music next week. Thank you, everyone who are locked in to the show tonight. Kevin Bull Grant, thank you. Carmen Williams, Jack L. Tucker, Christine Randall, Rupi T, Peter Augustus, all right, Natalie, and everyone else on the feed. Instagram, thank you. And good night. All right. And to our listeners on Reggae Vibes Radio, Clark TV Network, and the Waynallshow.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back with another great show next week at eight. Same time, same place, same blazing station. Until then, this is Wayne All saying 
Bye bye and see ya. Oh no, oh no, 24-7 production.